So this is how our history with shared counters would work. We have the program counter, we take some of the lowermost bits, use that to index into what we will call PHT or pattern history table. This is a table that simply keeps the history bits alone for that branch. So if we have an 11-bit history, this table will have 11 bits per entry. So it doesn't have the two-bit counters. But we do need the two-bit counter to eventually tell us whether the branch is supposed to be taken or not taken. So what we do is we take this history from this table, combine it in some way, usually using an XOR with the bits of the PC, and use that to index into what we still will call the branch history table. This branch history table has entries. Each of these entries is just a single two-bit counter, so each entry is very small. And that entry will tell us whether we should be predicting taken or not taken. When the branch outcome is known, we use the same history and PC combination to index back into this two-bit counter, increment or decrement it based on the current decision on a branch, and then we shift in that pattern also into the PHT entry so that this history is ready for the next prediction on this particular branch. So the idea is that the program counter here tells us which branch we are talking about. We hope that the pattern history table has one history per branch that we have. Different histories and different PCs will result in different two-bit counters being used and thus the decisions will be made for kind of like a combination of the history and the PC. Note that it is possible for another PC to map somewhere here, but that history, when XORed with that PC, gives us maybe the same 2-bit counter. So it is possible to have some overlap here, but the idea is that this way, for each PC, we have a single history. Of all the possible histories, where there is like 2 to the nth of them, we are really using only a very small number of counters because very few histories are actually happening. And that means that if we have a relatively large array of 2-bit counters, the possibility of conflict is very low. But this allows us to have a lot of bits of history. For example, if we take 11 bits of PC and we index into the PHT with them, we will need 2 to the 11th histories times, let's say, 11 bits of history. We XOR those 11 bits with these 11 bits, so we will have 2 to the 11th two-bit counters. So the overall cost of this predictor will be 2 to the 11th times 11 for the histories plus 2 to the 11th times 2 for the counters, which ends up costing us 26 kilobits. This is much less than what the cost would be if we had an array of two-bit counters for each possible history in each entry over here. Pretty much these 2 to the 11th times 2 would need to be in each entry here if we didn't do the XORing like this. Note also that we don't have to have these numbers here and here equal. We can, for example, take something like 10 bits of the PC to index into the PHT, which gives us only 2 to the 10th histories, and have a 16-bit history so that we can have 2 to the 16th entries here and so on. It still will keep the overall cost in the you know, tens of kilobits, not megabits or gigabits that we would get if we try to put together long histories with dedicating two-bit counters for each possible history in each entry.